Hello Aluxers! This is a special series we're doing here on Alux, where every day we showcase the life story of some of the most important figures in tennis. Today we're looking at 15 Things You Didn't Know About Eon Sidiak. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello Aluxers, thanks for joining us once again. Today we're looking at a man with the reputation of a colossal giant for his achievements as a professional sportsman and businessman. Ion Sidiak was born in Brasov, Romania on May 9, 1939. He's always been highly competitive and starred in the Romanian ice hockey team at the 1964 Olympics. In 1968, he became a pro tennis player. His greatest sporting achievement was winning the French Open doubles tournament in 1970. His record as a singles player was 166 wins and 177 losses. Despite the lack of major success in the sport, he's the richest man to have ever played professional tennis, ranking 1,686th on the 2017 Forbes Rich List. Now, if this isn't intriguing enough of a bio to keep you watching on, then I don't know what is. So let's just jump straight in, shall we? If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. Number 1. Eon Sidiak's first achievement was to survive World War II. The odds could not have been stacked against Eon much more heavily because he was born four months before the outbreak of World War II. Between 1943 and 1947, Romania had its highest infant mortality rate of the entire 20th century. Three of every 100 Romanians died during the war, so it was an achievement in itself that he made it through his childhood years. Number 2. Eon's first major successes in sport came as a coach and manager. After Eon retired, he became the full-time coach of compatriot Ely Narstarsi. Under Eon's tutelage, Narstarsi became world number one, winning over a hundred professional tournaments along the way. This raised Eon's reputation as a coach astoundingly, and he went on to train Mary Jo Fernandez, Guillermo Vilas, Marat Safin, Steffi Graf, and Goran Ivanisvic. Coaching such huge successful players with large international reputations made him realize the potential for sports personalities to make a lot of money. This laid the foundation of his business career. Number 3. Eon Made Millions Managing Boris Becker in 1984, Sidiak began managing the career of Boris Becker, rather than personally coaching him. During this period, Becker became an internationally recognized heartthrob whilst dominating the sport of tennis. Sidiak negotiated all of his sponsorship deals, earning him the most lucrative contracts in the history of the sport. One of Becker's sponsors was Lotto. In 1993, Sidiak made sure that 30 tennis shirts with the Lotto logo were available during the Wimbledon tournament for Becker to wear. This deal alone earned the pair over $1 million. Number 4. Eon Turned Millions Into Billions When The Soviet Union Fell the staggering wealth that Eon has managed to accumulate today is a result of his incredible foresight. In 1990, he sensed the Soviet Union would soon collapse, and with it, communist regulations on banking would cease to exist in Romania. He founded Banca Sidiac, the first privately owned bank in Romania since the 1930s. The bank evolved into Unicredit Sidiac before just being called Unicredit. It's now one of the largest banks in Romania and easily the largest Romanian-owned banks in the country. The majority of his wealth today is a result of investing the millions he earned from the sports industry so wisely. Number 5. Sidiac's net worth is over $2 billion Thanks to such smart investments and the creation of Sidiac Holdings, Eon is now worth over $2 billion. Sidiac Holdings is the company by which Eon is able to operate his businesses and invest in others. It is one of the largest and richest companies in Romania, employing over 2,000 people. It spans across 40 different businesses, including Sidiac Auto, Sidiac Immobiliere, Sidiac Air, Sidiac Leasing, and Sidiac Travel. 
At the age of 79, Eon has begun to take the back seat in his operations, and his son, Alexander Eon Zidiak, makes the most of his executive decisions. No doubt he still tries to think like his father as much as possible before making any moves. Number 6. By 1993, Sidiak's relationship with Boris Becker had cooled. When Boris Becker was 17, Sidiak promised that he would drop all other businesses and focus on transforming Becker into an international superstar. Sidiak would spend up to 20 hours a week mentoring his young protege. However, by Wimbledon of 1993, things had changed substantially. Sidiak said, At 17, 18, Boris needed me 20 hours a week. He needs me now 2 hours a week. In 1993, Becker had fallen into what was described at the time as malice. He read the existential work of writers such as Confucius and Gott and contemplated the point of tennis or life in general. In today's modern society, we might recognize this as depression rather than calling it malice. Nonetheless, it seemed the more that Becker distanced himself from Sidiak's shrewd advice, the more erratic his life became. Perhaps unsympathetically, Eon explained that Boris would never have an even career because his tennis always came second to his personality. Number 7. Eon Sidiak Ate a Champagne Glass Without Bleeding Everyone on the pro tennis circuit has a story about Eon during his time as a professional. In 1987, during an interview with Sports Illustrated, Rod Laver said he was out to dinner one evening with some of the other players after a tournament. Eon picked up a champagne glass from the table and ate it without bleeding. Rod said it was one of the most astonishing things he had ever seen. Eon always managed to give off the impression that he was out of this world, even though he was never the best player on the court. Number 8. Eon has been accused of being sexist for his comments about women's tennis. Eon has never been a man to bite his lip or hold back his opinions. In 2016, he voiced his point of view about female tennis players being given the same prize money as men. Since 2009, this has been the case in most major tournaments. Eon himself owns the Madrid Open, where that is also the case. However, he says that, looking at the statistics for his tournament, women getting the same prize money as men just doesn't add up financially. He believes that 75% of the revenue is generated from the men's tournament, and it's only fair that the prize money should reflect that. However, the internet backlash has been no less than expected. One person even commented, just another old man blurting out a sexist opinion. Number 9. Eon paid back $100 of damages done to an ice rink back in 1968. When Eon had just turned pro, he was playing at a tournament in England where a court had been set up in an ice skating arena. During a match, Sidiak got angry and slammed a ball up into the roof, dislodging some paneling. When one of the organizers complained to him it would cost over 100 pounds to repair, he said nothing and just looked back blankly. However, once the competition was over, the organizers and players were having a party at the bar overlooking the rink. Workers were dismantling the stage. Sidiak elegantly skated over and began to help loading items into the truck. This continued for over an hour before Eon joined the other players for the party. He turned to the organizer, Mr. Dewars, and said, I hope that makes up for the 100 pounds I cost you. Number 10. Eon has 415 vehicles. Eon has one of the largest collections of vintage cars on the planet. In total, he owns 415 vehicles and counting. The oldest is a Huntu 3 and a half quadricycle made in 1899. Most of his vintage cars can be seen on exhibition in his home country of Romania. The exhibition spans over 4,300 square miles and includes cars like a LaFerrari and a Rolls-Royce Phantom. And Alexers, if you'd like to see some more expensive cars, then check out our video, The Top 10 Most Expensive SUVs, by clicking in the top right corner. Number 11. In 2009, Sidiac Holdings successfully rebranded their businesses. After the financial crisis of 2008, Sidiac Holdings decided they needed to rebrand themselves in order to keep up with the times and appeal to a wider audience. All of their businesses would have the name in capital letters and in the same font. 
Above the name would be the logo for Citiac Holdings. The original logo, which remains the symbol of Citiac Holdings, is the shape of a shield with four sections, a lion, a star, a bee, and a tower. The lion represents power and integrity, the bee for endurance, the star for ambition, and the tower for stability. The rebranding changed the logos of Citiac's subsidiary businesses with more up-to-date branding. The rebranding was an award-winning success, which contributed to a 15% increase in sales over the subsequent two years. Number 12. Citiac says he would be happy to help Boris Becker out of bankruptcy. Despite all the money he gained thanks to the lucrative deals made by his manager, in 2017, Boris Becker was declared bankrupt. Becker had made some bad investments with his career earnings. As a result, a British judge declared him bankrupt because he was deemed to owe a business partner $36.5 million. Sidiak said, He's a part of my life. Nobody could take it from me. If he needs $10 million for a goal, I'll give it to him. Boris has had so much will, more than other tennis players, that made him big and that broke him. Number 13. Sidiak Can Speak Six Languages Sidiak can speak Russian, English, French, German, Hungarian, and Spanish fluently. However, those that know him well say he enjoys playing the idiot. When asked about his proficiency for languages, he said he was very smart because he learned to say, I surrender in six different languages. It's this kind of shrewd, ironic modesty that makes him such an enigmatic character and a great businessman. Number 14. Sidiak was the only player to lose by default in a Davis Cup match. In 1969, the U.S. played Romania in the final of the Davis Cup and won with a couple of games to spare. One of the remaining games was between Arthur Ashe and Ion Sidiak. The result didn't matter, but Sidiak didn't want to lose. When it looked as if defeat was going to be a distinct possibility, he began stalling whenever he saw the opportunity. President Nixon had invited all players to the White House the next day, so the match had to be concluded that evening. Sidiak would complain of cramps, spend an inordinate amount of time bouncing the ball before serves, and generally taking things slow. He knew that if he made it to dark and the result had not been settled, the match would go down as a draw and be struck from the records. However, the umpire knew exactly what Eon was doing and defaulted him, giving victory to Ash. To this day, he's the only player to lose by default in a Davis Cup match. Number 15. Sidiak Trailblazed the Way for Eastern European Businessmen the ex-professional sportsman with the second highest net worth after Eon Sidiak is Michael Jordan. He's believed to be worth $1 billion and is estimated that he still makes around $214,000 an hour without lifting a finger. Let's put that into perspective. Eon Sidiak's net worth is double that of Michael Jordan's at $2 billion. Sidiak's path to mega wealth is so revolutionary because it was born out of the fact he saw an opportunity, laid down all of his earnings as a player, coach and manager, and gambled big. The collapse of the Soviet Union and the subsequent deterioration of communist ideas about government was a very uncertain time. However, Sidiak had the intelligence and bravery to make the most out of the changes and now sits pretty atop an empire that few can rival. Well, Alexers, that wraps up our list of the 15 things you didn't know about Eon Sidiak. Now that you've learned some more about this successful athlete and businessman, we'd love to know. What current athlete do you think will be able to become a billionaire in the future after they've retired from their sport? Let us know in the comments. And of course, for sticking with us all the way to the end, it's you, our wonderful viewers, that make doing these videos so awesome. We hope you Aluxers enjoyed it. As a special treat, here's your bonus. Number 16. Sidiak's favorite player to coach was Guillermo Villas. His least favorite was Henri Leconte. In 1977, under the tutelage of Sidiak, Villas won the French and U.S. Open. The two traveled the world together for the next eight years. To this day, Sidiak says he was one of the greatest friendships he's experienced in his life. During this period, he also coached Henri Leconte, but found his character wild and erratic. 
Syriac said that Vilas was a president of the sport, always polite and modest. Lacant was an idiot, always belligerent and unruly. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you want more, we handpicked these videos you might enjoy. Or head over to alux.com for the best in fine living content on the planet. Be a part of the largest community of luxury enthusiasts in the world and tell your story.